This is 2OF Entertainment. So this is the new 2024 Kia Sorento. Now I did review the Sorento about three years ago, 2021, and to be honest, this is really just a facelift. The other car was actually, I thought, pretty handsome, but what is clearly happening is that sort of bringing it in line with sort of the family look. So you can see a resemblance to the EV9 in the front of this car. Uh, I'll put the specs and everything on the screen, but I will tell you that this particular car, this is a spec two Sorento HEV, so hybrid electric vehicle. So it's got the 1.6 liter TGDI uh, petrol engine. Uh, it's a six speed automatic. Price for this car is 42,000 uh, 995. Now I will tell you that they actually start from just under 42,000 and they go to just under uh, 57,000 pounds for the top spec. So this one has a 1.6 litre engine. It's got 212 brake horsepower, 367 Newton meters of torque, top speed of 113 miles per hour, zero to 60 in 9.7 seconds. Fuel consumption combined is 42.2 miles per gallon. So as ever, we'll have a quick look around it. Again, I did review it three years ago, so you can also check out that review. I'll put the link below and uh, above whatever, but I will take a look around. Uh, we'll look at the practicality, we'll look at the interior, and then of course we'll take it for a quick drive. Now this thing is pretty huge. Now under here is the release for the boot. It's not powered. And then you've got the boot space here. Let me roll the cover back so that we can have a look at it in all its glory. Because what you're looking at there is, well, what I should tell you first of all, that this has a third row. With the third row up, we're looking at 179 liters of space which isn't huge, but with that down, there's 813 liters of space. And if you fold the other row as well, you get nearly 2,196 liters of space. So it's a seven seater. So under here, you've got tools and a little bit of a cubby box down there. Back here, before we look at the seats, you can see they've got their own vents at the back. They've got little um, pocket there to put stuff. And of course, uh, cup holder as well and over here we've got rear AC so they actually have their own AC back here as well and then they have the this is to fold the seats uh, the seats these are these ones the second row seats down and then you've got a 12 volt power supply um, and you've got a hook here you've got a hook here you've got more hooks there for netting so let's see if we can actually pull this up there you go so then that gives you an idea of how much interior space would be there with the seats up. So yeah, so that makes sense actually. It's 189. That's the rear seat. It's actually not bad. I'm not going to attempt to get into it. I don't think that I could. Although, it doesn't seem to be too bad there. To be honest with you. In fact, you know what? Right, this is not the way to do this. This is not the way to do this, but I'm just curious. This is probably all over the place. <laughs> Camera's gone all over the place. There you go. So I'm just gonna, this is not the way to do it. I mean, obviously the, the, this thing is still up and what have you, but I just wanted to see. Yeah, this is, this is not happening for sure. So this is what, what it's like. So like, I can't even get my legs in, even if I'm all the way back, but I guess this is really kid seats really. So I suppose that, you know, I'll see if we can move that seat forward a bit if they maybe are sliding, but really this is just for kids. Right, let's actually, where are you? Let's actually get into the actual rear row, which is the middle row in this car. Hey, are you enjoying this video? Then make sure you hit the like button. It's very important. Plus, comment, share, and make sure you're subscribing. So here we are, and before I get in, let's have a look at this door, because that's so nicely done. That's leather upholstery, or certainly leather-like upholstery. Nice door handle there, cup holder there. And then you've got the piano black surround for that. Nice little motif there as well, which just looks nice. It's kind of very, very smooth. And this is not bad at all, nicely textured. Now, these are the seats I was talking about. And the question I had was, do they slide back and forth? 
and I suspect that they do. So actually, I'm just going to put that down for a minute. That would have given me, ah oh yeah, you see, so that would have actually given, you can see that, that would have given me quite a bit of room there. So actually maybe I could have traveled in the back if I had to in that third row, um, depending on the size of the people sitting in front and how easy they would be. Anyway, let's put that back where it was. This seat is pretty much set for me. I just sat in it and it seemed to be fine. So again, this car, and as you can see, it's very, very spacious, but of course it's meant to be spacious. Can you see me all right there? Let me move that up a little bit. But it's meant to be spacious. That's what this car is all about. So in here, I've got plenty of leg room, uh, plenty, of, plenty of knee room, so leg room. Um, you know, it could do with a little bit more room here. Again, maybe I might move this seat forward. We'll see. Look at these little USBs on the side here. USB-Cs. Actually, I have this on the Kia EV9 as well. It's a real sort of strong family identity thing that they're now doing with Kia, which is actually unusual because Kia and Hyundai, I would say, are both known for actually not going with the family identity thing. They go for quite different uh, designs. Oh, obviously, uh, Isofix Chelsea anchor points in here. And you've got cup holders. Does that open? I'm just wondering. No, I don't think it does. But anyway, but yeah, I mean, you've got seating for three here, really. So you've got uh, five and two in the back, so seven-seater, that's what they're saying. And over here, you've got uh, vents. So these are the vents here. And then you've got down here, on this one, you've got 12 watts supply. But then don't forget, you've got your USB-Cs there. Cool. Very nice back here. What's it like in the front? Let's find out. Right then, here we are inside the new Kia Sorento. Well, the facelifted new Kia Sorento. It's still a relatively new car, and it's a relatively. I mean, look. I mean, look at that. I, I, most cars I can reach across, and that like I have to really lean across to get into that side of the car. It's massive. It is a spacious thing. It's meant to be, right? This is what it's all about. Can you see me all right in that one? Looks like. Um, so what have we got here? Well, let's see. Let's start up. It's a hot day. Starter button is down here, which uh, confused me a little bit. <laughs> there you go. And as you can see, it all comes to life there. Look at that display. Okay, there's a bit of flicker on the camera, but it's quite steady here. And uh, I wonder if it does. So you can see the revs coming up there. So the engine was dead until I pressed the accelerator pedal. And then suddenly it came on and then started to rev. That's what it's doing there. But a huge amount of, so the massive, there's a massive display that goes all the way across there. Obviously these are divided here, so this is a separate display, but there's your instrument display, there's your home screen. Uh, you can actually scroll through. Um, I'm doing, I'm not supposed to be doing that, but anyway, so there, so there you go. So there you go, all your, your voice memo. You can record a voice memo on this. Actually, it's got the AC on because it is, look at that. It's all touch button and then it all came to life. Did you see that? That was amazing. That was so cool. The fan has come on really loud, so let's turn the fan speed down, but we'll turn the temperature down so we get cool, but we don't have the intrusion of the fan noise, but it's automatic as well. Recycling, all the rest of it. This is so neat right here. This is your voice memo. How does that work? So you can record voice memos in there. So if you're driving along and you suddenly remember that you needed to do something, leave yourself a voice memo. Calendar, settings, <coughs> vehicle diagnostics. Vehicle check in progress. Wow, talk about the sophistication on these things, huh? I mean, this is really like, you know, this is like a checklist before you take off or something. Anyway, I don't think we need to do that. These are brand new vehicles, so it's fine. Um, okay, here we go. Online manual, notification, vehicle diagnostics, sport. What does sport do? What route guidance? I didn't ask for any route guidance. Uh, my team's baseball was all that about loading sports information. Oh, so it gives you sports updates. Wow. So if you're into your sports, then that is, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Valet mode. What does a valet mode do? I guess it uh, knocks, lock, probably locks out various things and what have you so that they, they can't mess around and get at your compartments or something. I'm not sure. Maybe if anybody out there knows, let me know. But there's a valet mode in this car. Kia Connect General Voice Recognition User Profile. So you set up your profile so it remembers your seating position and all the rest of it. Buttons, displays, sound. Oh my goodness, vehicle. I mean, climate, eco vehicle, driver assistance modes. Look at that. There you go. There's all the driver, driver warning, attention warning. So it's got camera watching me and stuff. Driver convenience, driver safety, climate. What's the eco vehicle? Uh, coasting timing. So it's just a safe, uh, safe fuel. Wow. That is a ton of things in there. So what else have we got? Uh, driver assistance, eco, climate. 
and then we go back to the home screen and we got the home screen stuff there which for some reason it's set up a nav which I didn't want. Okay, route guidance has been cancelled, so that's quite good. Quite an easy way to straight away cancel that. Over here, you've got a compartment. So now I've closed the compartment. Now I've opened the compartment. Inside the compartment, you've got wireless charging. You've got USB-Cs as well. Over here, you've got heated seats. We don't need that today. Today's a warm day. This is your gear shift. This actually, to be honest with you, reminds me a lot of Bentley with the knurled aluminium edging and this sort of middle bit here. Very, very Bentley to me, that, that says. A reverse neutral drive, parking is, button is in the middle, drive terrain, so what happens there? So you've got here on the screen, you can see, let me move that up, uh, drive terrain, drive, okay, drive terrain, there you go, sand, snow, mud, all the rest of it, and then you've got eco, you've got um, sport, and you've got smart. I guess smart figures out what you're trying to do, right? And then we'll adjust everything accordingly. I guess that's what it does. So that's quite useful. Um, and then what else have we got here? All the buttons here, auto hold, park, camera. So you've got camera there. Let me, let me show you that. So it's not got 360 then. Let me just put that on. No, it's just got a reversing camera. It hasn't got 360. So that's interesting. Um, unless, no, that's it. Nice, no, that's what it's got. Okay, final option. Extended rear camera use. Oh, okay, that's just like, if you want to keep the camera on for a while. Interesting. And you've got a big old cubby box there, which is what you would expect in a car like this with an extra compartment that, um, that hopefully I haven't broken. No, no, it just comes out and sits back again like that. Like this. Oh, you've got little clips there as well. I don't know if you made that out, where you can like put money. Don't put your money there. Um, the canvasy. Canvasy seats there, hard wearing, interesting. Glove box, deep. This is not, not vents all the way. They look like they're vents all the way, but just, you see that? Oops, other way. But you see that? It's just, it's a design thing, design element. But here's the vent, there's the vent. That's not a vent. Uh, and then that's a vent as well. Quite nice this, very spacious, very practical. There's even stuff up here to play with. Uh, no, uh, no sunroof though. And uh, quite a dark, uh, roof lining let's take it for a drive sorry to interrupt the video guys hope you're enjoying it in the meantime i wanted to tell you about this it's my first novel the ulez files it's all about cars it's for you guys get your copy now at amazon.com so let's give this a little bit of a go oh yeah i feel it going into drive you really feel a little bit of a thug, tug there as it moves across and uh big big vehicle um not very big roads <laughs> <laughs> that always makes things a little bit interesting. Uh, so yeah, straight away it moves off uh, in petrol mode, really. I can hear the engine, you know, definitely. And off we go. Very smooth, very, it just glides along, you know. It just glides. Very, very serene. Engine sort of starts to make itself known a little bit there. A little bit gruff, actually. But otherwise, you know, very quiet. So it's gone off now, because I can see no revs. So we're going downhill, so obviously the engine's gone off. It must have gone into regen, uh, regen as well. It says ready. So it kind of knows that the engine is off, but it says ready, so we're ready to go whenever you are, sort of thing is what it's saying, I guess, you know? So I did actually move the seat forward a little bit, this seat, which means that therefore there's actually more room behind me which means, therefore, that actually you could move that second row forward a bit more to give the third row passengers a little bit more room. So potentially you could carry uh, seven regular sized adults, I reckon, in this. Um, I'm not regular sized, but I think you could actually. I think you could carry them. Don't think it's that much of an issue. Right, so we're about to see what the acceleration is like on this. Just give it some beans. Speed check zone. Cool. Moves all right. What do we have? 40, yeah, 50. Yeah, that's fine. So, so that was zero to 50, if you like, you know, which is not bad actually. Um, quite. I've got paddle ships here as well. What do they do? I don't know if they're doing anything because I think it's region. I think that's region. Yeah, that's not paddle shifts for the gears. I think that is region. So yeah, 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 yeah. So as I lift off, I'm getting a lot of braking. But why, why is it not showing me how much region I'm getting? I 
can't see any indication there. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm getting it. LV1, there you go. It's right there, just underneath the model of the car that you can see. Um, now I've got none whatsoever. So if I lift off, it's just coasting, there you go. And then if I press this one, I've got LV1, LV2, LV3, which literally like, it's not, I wouldn't say it's one pedal mode, but it's quite a lot of regen braking. Let's leave it in that LV3 for a while, see how we get on. Um, and we can see the battery is about half at the moment oh it actually is quite abrupt lifting off that so it will take a little bit of getting used to so we're just taking it for a short drive um, it's a big old thing but placing it is not a problem because you can see the bonnet lines quite clearly so you can actually see where the extremities of the car are it's not too much of an issue and you can see that the rear window is quite far away from you it's way back there you can see that yeah it's quite a substantial distance away so that's something I suppose but on the other hand you know that's fine you know it's, it's, it's a big car you know you're driving a big car and that's how things are meant to be so it's all about you know can, how easy is it to drive it's very easy because it just glides it just moves along the touches the controls everything are just they just need a light touch whatever steering has got a little bit of heft to it but i like that but you know it's a little bit of play as well but again you know this it's a big car it's not a sports car um going back to the modes how did i do the mode last time right so we are in so we are in eco, it goes green, everything goes green, and then sport goes red, and then smart goes orange. So if we leave it in smart, yeah, I mean, that's pretty nifty. I mean, it wallows, it wallows, it leans, it's, it's a barge, but what do you expect? I mean, that's exactly what it's meant to be, right? So put it into sport, I think you're getting about the same um, sort of response whether it's sport or whether it's uh, smart so I reckon that's what it does I'm just gonna leave it in uh, smart actually for now see how we get on with that driving it through some tighter towny bits now where obviously um, you have to be careful with the side the uh, the region thing really actually works better in this environment because it really helps you to slow down very quickly um, especially for a big tug like this and uh, you can just modulate it a little bit better i think so uh, or maybe i'm just getting used to it it's one of those things i've actually always liked one pedal systems i know a lot of people don't really like them it doesn't really work for them they find it really weird but um i've actually found them i've always found them quite good actually it does the little beeps and bongs and things like that which uh, most of them are related to speed of course nowadays they all have to have um, certainly speed alert systems um, but also speed limiter systems in europe which are equipped in the cars, but um, I don't know if they're active yet for the UK. But as soon as you go above the speed limit, um, it just starts bonging at you. <laughs> so again, slowing right down. And then actually when the speed, ch it's funny because when the speed changes, it alerts you with a little ching, a little chime there, just to tell you that the speed limit has actually changed. So that, that could be helpful. Uh, tried the stereo that's pretty good as well as you'd imagine in a vehicle like this well equipped and pretty much you know this is very well equipped i mean this is pretty much you know everything you need is right here maybe could do with a 360 camera i guess maybe the top spec versions have that but other than that you've got everything you could possibly want so actually let's go into sports actual sports mode you can see the gear shift i think had a little bit of a alteration there the moment it went into sports mode and um I don't think any difference in suspension, which by the way is very, very smooth. On the smooth surfaces is very smooth, but you do feel a little bit of the surface when it starts to get a little bit um, uneven, if you like. Uh, the steering thing is there. Uh, well, I can turn it off. don't know. Maybe now I've turned it off. I think it went dark there, but it still has lane assist and all of that sort of stuff. So big machine, chucking it into a corner and hold the hold on tight. Holds on pretty tight pretty smooth and again throwing it into the corner not an issue so again you know it's got uh, poise that's for sure I mean I'm not throwing it really hard into we ain't got that sort of speed or that sort of space but just in terms of you know just to see what it can do and stuff you know uh, it seems to be absolutely fine how about the brakes brakes are quite lean and strong strong they do pull it. I mean of course I've still got the regen on I believe or has it turned it off I can't see it anymore I think it's turned it off once I put it into sports mode, yeah. It feels like it's turned it off.
Oh, it's gone gears now. Oh, the interesting. <laughs> interesting. This is cool. So the paddle shifts then become gears once you put it into sports mode. <laughs> and then what about if I put it back into eco mode? Then L yeah, then they're back to regen again. And then if I put it back into smart mode, yeah, it's still regen. But if I put it into sports mode, then yeah, you get more of a sensation of gear changes. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Then yeah, four, six. It's giving me indications of what gear I'm in and uh, telling me when I should change up and stuff like that. So that's quite interesting. So there you go. I think that it's you know and I'm threading it through nicely. You know, not really an issue. So again, you know, despite the size, um, it's generally fine around town. You've got to be aware of its size, but it's fine. And even on here on these B roads, it seems to be acquitting itself uh, very well indeed. So plenty of performance, uh, decent handling, uh, poise is not bad. Bit of a roly poly if you really start to check it around. Um, ride is good, and that's the compromise because you know it needs to make sure that it maintains comfort for the uh, six passengers that you could be carrying in this thing uh, in addition to yourself so overall um, Sorento made better it was a good car to start with made better if you need more space than this I would recommend the EV9 but that's obviously electric but that feels even more gargantuan than this one um, but certainly this one seems pretty practical pretty spacious and of course with the hybrid now this also comes as a diesel um, but it also comes as a plug-in hybrid and the plug-in hybrid uh, flavor as well and I think that uh, for a lot of people if you have a smart charger at home or if you can have one installed that's a vehicle that would make a lot of sense this is a hybrid so you don't have to plug it in just fuel it and go and it will take care of the rest anyway let me know what you think of the new updated refreshed and uh, with the new Kia uh, identikit face on it if you like uh, on the front of the car and also those chunky rear tail lights as well let me know what you think of it and I'll catch you all in the next video